Welcome back to another episode of State of Soccer and welcome back to another episode of the great UK football tour. And today I'm at a stadium that has to be on the top of anyone's list. And honestly, the team really needs no introduction. If, if this stadium is not on your itinerary when you come to the UK, when you come domestically to England, then what are you even doing? Today, we're gonna be checking out Old Trafford, home of Manchester United. All right, now before we head inside, let's quickly take a walk around. First stop is the United Trinity statue, which commemorates the trio of George Best, Dennis Law, and Sir Bobby Charlton, who helped United become the first ever English club to win the European Cup. From there, the outside of the stadium is lined with photos of United legends past and present. Those who have elevated the Red Devils and becoming one of the largest brands in global football. A quick stop in front of the Munich Air Disaster Memorial showcases the darkest moment in Manchester United's history. Now with the stadium tour quickly approaching, let's take a stroll over to the Manchester United Museum. I can confidently say that this is the best club museum I've ever visited. With the main attraction for such a story club like Manchester United, of course, being the trophy room. And on display are Fergie's 13 Premier League trophies while managing United. Following the trophy room, my eyes jumped to the kits. Manchester United's kit history is well on display, and I thought it was really cool to see how their looks have evolved over the years. From past Manchester United legends all the way to present day, all of this history made our trip inside of Old Trafford that much more palpable. So off we go. The tour starts off with a quick visit to no other than the Sir Alex Ferguson stand. A quick word from our tour guide as all four sections are introduced. That's the East End. Still known to many as the old scoreboard end. Up until 1971, the only scoreboard in the stadium, located just over here. Moving around the stadium and straight ahead of you there, what is that stand called? Bobby Sir Charles. Bobby Charlton's stand. We all heard of Sir Bobby. Yeah. Quite possibly the greatest player Manchester United has ever produced. Winner of the World Cup with England 1966, winner of our first ever European Cup 1968. He held record of Prince of Club 758. From there, we took a nice Old Trafford stroll through the concourse. The concourse seemed a bit dated, lacking the feel of a big club competing for global supremacy. Typically on these tours, I like to remain positive, but this really stood out to me. As the tour made its way into the away end, I started to realize that the visiting supporters might have the best view at Old Trafford. Thrusted in the corner between the East Stand and Sir Bobby Charlton Stand, opposing support has sweeping views of the Stratford End and Sir Alex Ferguson Stand. Not bad. So after shamelessly asking a lovely couple to take a photo of me in the away end, it was now finally time to check out Manchester United's dressing room. For any visiting football fans, the opportunity to visit Cristiano Ronaldo's locker was too cool to turn down. With my eye on getting a photo of Ronaldo's locker, I walked around the dressing room admiring the room's design and the kits that were laid out representing United's first team. Players like Bruno Fernandes, David De Gea, Harry Maguire, and well, Phil Jones. And then, as quickly as you can say, Eric Ten Hag, I brazenly fought my way past a couple of families, channeled my inner Roy Keane, and stepped in front of Cristiano. Bam. From there, there was no time or interest in visiting the away dressing room, for we, we were about to walk out onto the pitch as Manchester United players. So I'll let you enjoy the moment. But before I finally quiet down, now is a good time to ask, hit like, and subscribe. And now, you can walk down the tunnel at Old Trafford. Once pitch side, it was hard to keep your eyes off of the pristine grass. A quick word from our tour guide as he glossed over some of the more legendary home and opposing players to take the field at Old Trafford. Duncan Edwards, Sir Bobby Charlton, Bill Aitron, Dennis Law and George Best, international stars Eusebio, Diego Maradona all made the way down some of the decades. But I decided to play villain and take a seat in the away dugout. 
which fun fact was the home dugout until this season when Eric Ten Hag decided to align the players closer to the home tunnel and Stratford End. One thing to mention was that these seats were incredibly comfy. Cheers to Manchester United for allowing us to sit in the players dugout. For every other tour I went on while in England, this was not the case. Now this, this was the best view in the house. With that, we made our way into the media room, which has played a major role in United's history. We'll leave it to the tour guide to explain. Historically, the room has served a very prestigious purpose, 1992-2002. It was a chosen venue to unveil new signings to the world's media, and the vast majority of those players being legends of the 98-99 treble winning side, like Roy Keane, Teddy Sheringham, Dwight York, Andy Cole, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, all signed the first contract for the club, ceremonially sat behind the desk here alongside Charlotte in the 90s. <laughs> And with that, the tour winded its way past a concession stand and back towards the gift shop, where I admired some really expensive Manchester United tag your watches, and out of the stadium I went. Well, that does it for today's episode of State of Soccer. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Manchester United's famous Old Trafford. Until next time, this is Brian McDonough. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>